So now you know how to calculate from mole to gram. Uh, so this is problem uh, problem one. In problem one, um, so one you you calculated mass from the mole. So you get a you get a mole multiplying by molar mass. You get the mass of the um, so mass of the 3.5 mole of water. That means 3.5 mole of water has this mass of water. Right. This amount of water, right? That's what it is. And the next problem you solve is in the top, which you have uh, gram to gram to mole, right? Uh -huh. What do you got? You got gram, and then you divide it by uh, molar mass. That means you used a uh, uh, converting factor, one mole carbon dioxide over molar mass of carbon dioxide. Then you got the number of mole on that amount. So that means this amount of carbon dioxide has this number of moles. See? That's what it is. Any question? No. Wonderful. So the next thing we're going to incorporate, um, what you did, you see the two part of the converting, right? First part is this. We just applied, we just learned it. Now we're going to learn second part, which is uh, mole to mole to number of atom. That means if a one dozen, 12 egg. If a one mole, this number of atom. So we'll be solving from gram to mole, mole to atom. So let me erase these two. So I'll keep one for you in the, in the top, and we'll be drinking the bottom. OK, what do you have in the PowerPoint? Our PowerPoint has a couple of more examples for you. Gram to mole, and you see, equal to Dividing the molar mass, not the mole. Okay, one more example for you here. You have a gram, you have a uh, option to calculate the mole. So um, this is how many atoms percentage in chromium present, right? So what do you have in here? You have a gram of chromium in a diet. So and then, um, Gram, you need to see how many atoms on that diet. So that means you have a gram, you have a gram converting to the mole, then mole need two atoms. This is two steps. So earlier one we did one step, gram to mole. Now we're doing mole to uh, gram to mole, mole to gram, mole to atom. So what is given? 1.0 times 10 to negative 6. Let me, give, let me make an example for you, that'll be easier. Because this one you can see when you go home, right? Mm -hmm. It's posted for you. Yeah. Let me make an example so that you can relate, you know, yeah. with other examples, different ways. So, um, question is, how many atoms in five gram of Magnesium. That's the question. How many atoms in five gram of magnesium? That means you're starting off five gram, right? Five gram. And then you converting to gram to mole. So when you do that, you multiply it with the converting factor, which is gram to mole, which is one mole of Magnesium equal to, you can look at the period table um, with the two decimal. Anybody? 24 point? 24 point 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, so mole of magnesium, how you convert to mole to atom? So look at that. Up to here, you you got you cut off 
the gram, but you still have more. So your answer should be in a atom. How many atoms? That's your, that's your destination. Calculate the atom, right? And you want to do that, then um, atom to mole, what is the converting factor you have? Atom to mole, you see, um, one mole equal to one mole of anything. Magnesium equal to 6.023 times 10 to 23, right? Mm -hmm. That's the formula you have. It could be sodium, could be atom, could be any molecule. So, I have a one gram of one mole of magnesium, that means one mole of magnesium is equal to 6.023 times 10 to 23 magnesium. You see? Now, mole cancelling out, you got in atom. How many atoms? This is the magnesium atom. Now you see what you got. You got 5 on the top, 6.023 times 10 to 23 over 24.3. Use the calculator. When you use the calculator, do not, uh, do not touch 10 to 23. Do not touch it. Do the other part. So that would be, what do you do? Uh, 5 times, yes, 6.023 divide 24.3, yes. So you got 1.23. So how many significant you need? You need, uh, how many significant you need in here? You have only one sig figure, right? Yeah, okay. So you write one. Um, so the one point two three nine times ten to three. So that's how you got. So one point two three nine. If you use calculator. So remember that this exponent. Do not put in a calculator. Leave as it is. You see? It's top, leave the top. And do other part, put the answer. And if decimal is not in the right place, or you got too big number or too small number, then you adjust it by moving decimal left to right and you change the exponent. If you forgot, look at the first chapter. You we talked about that how to convert smaller number or bigger number to exponent. Okay? So, but in here is fine. The symbol is after one digit, which is totally fine. Okay. So, if you look at uh, this example, you see the gram to mole, mole to atom, right? Mm -hmm. So, you have more example in here. Uh, so, to practice, now we're going to be moving to next concept, which is formula. Yes, empirical formula and molecular formula. So let me ask you, um, anybody have any idea about empirical and molecular formula? What are the definitions or what is the differences between these two names? One empirical, one molecular. Think, think about it for a second. Okay, first of all, what is empirical formula? It's like a simplified version. Simplified version of of empirical of molecular formula. Yes. So this is a simplified version of molecular formula. For instance, H two O two, right? You know what is the molecule, right? Someone want to drink it, right? Okay. So if you make a simplified version, which is 2 2, you can get the smallest ratio, smallest integer ratio. You cannot make 8.2 and 0.2, right? No. It would be integer ratio of these two atoms is HO, you can write like this, 1 1. 
one even show, right? One one. That's called uh, smallest ratio. For instance, if you have a this compound C six H six. So you can write um, what is CH. CH, right? So CH could be simplified version of some other molecule too. So for instance, if I have a C two H two, you see. So one empirical could be coming from two different or many different molecular formula because it's a simplified option. But one molecular formula only for single molecule. You see? This is for single molecule, hydrogen peroxide. There is no other name with H2O2. But HO could be simplified for many molecule. Right? Mm -hmm. So what is the difference? The difference is this is the actual number of atoms present in a molecule that shows up. But this one is simplified option. The most, the smallest, smallest integer ratio of atom in a integer. For instance, 2 becoming 0, 2 becoming 1, 24 becoming 12, 60 becoming 30. What, how are you dividing by? Two. Only 2. So you're dividing all subspeed by same number which is N, which is N. If you go back to example, H2O2 and HO, right? So you must, you're dividing by two, the so both integer. That means um, this two, we can call, okay, this N equal to, N equal to, so mass of molecular formula, and this is over mass of empirical formula. So mass of molecular formula or mass of empirical formula, this is the this M. So how do you calculate the empirical formula? That's something we need to learn. The way you calculate the empirical formula is, for instance, you have a percentage. For instance, uh, give a percentage of hydrogen and oxygen. So hydrogen and oxygen. So hydrogen percentage is 7.7, 7.7, and oxygen is 92.3. This is the percentage, right, you got. So sometimes you will have a percentage of a atom in a molecule. Sometimes you have a gram of um, atoms in a molecule. So your goal is to see how to, what is their empirical formula, what is the molecular formula. That's your goal is. So in that case, first the percentage, if it is percentage, then you took percentage as a gram, 7.7 .7 gram, 92.3. Three gram. See, mm -hmm. you convert them to the gram. Then, if you get gram, gram, you need to go to the mole because these two two numbers, you see, one one, that's actually mole ratio. So you convert. Tell me how you convert gram to mole. How you convert gram to mole? You just did it today. By dividing, dividing by molar mass, right? Yes. So that means what do you do? You are dividing one mole of hydrogen over for one point zero zero eight gram of hydrogen. So remember, you dividing by molar mass, you get into the mole. Same thing for oxygen. If you have a uh, This is carbon. So this carbon is dividing by 12 gram of carbon over one mole of carbon. You see? Then what do you got? You got the temperature. Uh, you got about 7.7, .7. and this is the mole. This is the mole you got. And the other one you got if you divide. 
then you got seven again you got seven point seven point six nine more similar right so step one you can dividing by their molar mass to get the mole and out of these two moles or it could be more than two atoms out of these two or three the one is the smallest number of mole you dividing all of them by smallest one so which one is the smallest one in here 7.69 right out of these two so 7.69 this is dividing also 7.69. See, dividing by smaller one. If more than dividing by smallest out of that. Then you get um, about one. You also get about one. See? You can get approximate value to make it integer. Because you don't going to put any number subscript other than integer. So you take it as close to integer, right? One. To one, but what if you have 1.5? You have 1.5, which is in the middle. 1.5. Then you need to multiply both of the mole ratio by a certain number so that decimal become integer. In that case, you will multiply by two to make it three. Multiply by two to make it two. See. But here is not the case. Here, you got both of them, got one, one. And then, then you put the atom, carbon and hydrogen, one, one. You see? Mm -hmm. The ratio you got, the more ratio that you put at the subscript. That, that, that's called empirical formula. So this is the empirical formula. And how do you get the Molecular formula. Molecular formula, to get the molecular formula, you need get this N. N is mass of molecular formula over mass of empirical formula. Which one top, which one bottom? You see the me. Me means molecular, E empirical, me. Molecular over empirical formula, that gives you N. If you get N, for instance, here, to get N for this molecule uh, would be Carbon 12 plus hydrogen 1, 13, right? This is the empirical formula mass. You see? To get a mass of molecular formula, it always have to be given. You have to know the mass of molecular formula to get the N. So, mass of molecular formula here is uh, 78.1. So, look at that. N equal to 78.1 over 13. Because this 78.1 came from mass of molecular formula. This 13 is mass of empirical formula. So what is the N you got? About 6, right? So this 6 you put, so this is the N, remember? You multiply N with a 1 becoming 2. Multiply it to 1 by N, which is 2, becoming 2, right? So now you, you got CH in here, which is the empirical formula. This empirical formula, you converting to this one, you multiply by 6. So that is C6 and H6. This is the molecular formula. And this is the, this is the, this is the empirical formula. This is the molecular formula. This is the MF. Molecular formula, empirical formula. Go back to recapping. You had a percentage. You dividing by their atomic mass. So get to the mole. Mole, you put it as a their subscript to get the empirical formula. To get the molecular formula, you get uh, you have to get the N. N is molecular me, me molecular or empirical. Molecular mass or empirical mass. You got six. This six is gonna be the N integer, which what are you multiplying to the subscript. That gives you C6H6. Six, six. You see? So I have a more problems. Uh, you can solve them, practice, next class we'll be solving more to make it concept very clear, okay? Thank you. Next class. Next class. Yeah.